Hello and welcome to the video. In this video we're going to take our first look at this thing here. This is the new Cube camera from Foxair. It's a 4K camera and is a, just over about half the price of something like the GoPro Session 5. And what I'd like to do is not spend too much time doing a comparison, only about things like the size and we'll also do some side-by-side -side video as well, but really to show you what this thing is and what you kind of get for the money. Now, we've done an awful lot of run cam cameras on the channel so far, and everybody was telling me how good the Foxeer cameras are. So I've been playing with a couple of Foxeer cameras here as well, and we'll probably see those in future videos. And I must admit, they are very impressive. They work really, really well. But the star of the show today is going to be this thing, this new 4K camera. Now, I'll put a link in the description if you want to go and have a look. Um, and the way it comes packaged is very nice, water resistant, less distortion, it says on the side. There's the camera. And one of the things you'll probably immediately see is actually it's physically a little bit bigger than the GoPro, but we'll come back to that in a second. Under the foam, then there's a little box of bits. And in here you have things like your charging cables, your manual, additional stand, little screwdriver to set the front off if you accidentally crack the glass and have to get some more. Now to take it out of this cradle, in fact before we do that let me give you an idea of the difference in weight with the cradles on. 117 for the Fox Ear, about 111 so very close. Let's take both of these little guys out of their respective cases. And I can show you that the Fox here is very slightly physically bigger than the GoPro. Now, that does mean, of course, that it's not going to fit in all the same mounts, but it probably means that this camera is going to survive a bit longer than something like the Runcam 3, which is almost identical size. Five session, 73 grams, and the Fox here is 73 grams, so exactly the same weight. But what you will notice is that they are a different size. The Fox here is very slightly bigger. So that does mean that if you have a quad, like this is the uh, new coppice one from the guys at Hollybro, whereas the holder that comes with it is absolutely designed to fit your GoPro, it sadly isn't going to fit. The Fox here is just too big. Now that isn't a disaster, I'm going to just spend a bit of time designing some mounts for it so that it can go on the various quads. So let me kind of show you what it looks like up close. Uh, it does look like something that Microsoft designed. I almost expect it to say Xbox, but there is minimal controls on here. All of the pieces are accessed via this top hatch. If you open the top hatch, and in here we have our HDMI out. We have our SD card that goes in at an angle, uh, a USB charging port, not the micro that everyone else is using, but at least it's a more standard port than the one on the GoPro. Then the controls on the side are very simplistic. You have a power on and off. You have the button to turn it from video to still mode. And this one is your start and stop if you press it briefly, if you press and hold, it will turn the Wi-Fi on and off. So let me just very quickly talk about some of the specs. It's a 2.8mm, 155 degree field of view. Uh, it is a 4K camera, true 4K camera, but you have an awful lot of choices about the kind of video and frame rates and also the aspect ratio as well, and will uh, turn on the wide view and also test it against the super view just to show you kind of the difference in a minute. It does have lens protection glass, which is removable, and that's what that little torque style driver is for so you can remove it and place it if it gets smashed which is nice has a stereo microphone doesn't have any form of display on this and that's one of the things that i have found a little bit frustrating uh, whereas with some of the other action cameras like this one when you power it up you actually get your little display at the top that shows you exactly what's going on and what settings in and how it's all working. Uh, with this one, there isn't any indication at all. You do need to connect it to the app to be able to change the settings or to be able to change the way that it's uh, actually working or recording. 
has uh, electronic image stabilization. We've got that turned on. We'll take it out for a second and get some footage of me walking around uh, so you can see what it looks like in action. Video format, uh, again, I'll connect it to the application in a sec. You'll see them all. And it also has EV compensation as well. So let me just connect this up to the application on my trusty tablet. And let me just show you how it works. Thing to do is you have to turn on the camera, turn on Wi-Fi, and then connect to the Wi-Fi network on your tablet. So let's just quickly connect to this using the tablet, and I'll show you all the settings that we do have on it before we go out and we get some footage. So you can download the application onto iOS or Android, and then once you've connected to the phone, I've connected here via Wi-Fi, then you can start the app and just start browsing the settings. So there are a huge range of settings for the camera and of course you have to use the app because there isn't any screen on the device but I'll very quickly show you some of them in here. So for example in the video setting at the very top that's a 3840 by 2160 pixels 25 frames a second and all goes all the way down to a 720p image at lots and lots of different frame rates. Each of the settings have both a 16.9, a 4.3 and a supervision setting as well. And I'm going to do the comparison video and show you some of uh, the video from the camera in a minute with the supervision setting turned on because it gives a phenomenal field of view. In fact, slightly bigger than the super view on the GoPro. Going into the camera settings for stills, you have a lot of choice as well. Right the way down from 14 million, down the way to 3 million pixel images. All of those are 4-3 aspect ratios. There is one 16-9 setting in the current firmware for an 8.3 megapixel image. But to be honest, most of us are probably going to be using this for video anyway. If you go into the main settings, pretty much everything is changeable if you don't like the way the camera's performing. I'm leaving everything as stock and default here for the video images. I'm going to show you how it's performing and even in stock the camera is very impressive. We have things like EV compensation, white balance, uh, sharpness settings, also have settings in here for things like setting it up for a car DVR which is interesting because that's something that other cube cameras don't like to do. But It's actually got a setting in here to set that up inside the box. And there's also the settings for the TV out. The cable that you get in the kit, you can connect it to a five volt supply that will help maintain the charge in the camera. And then there's also a video out as well. So you can connect it to a video transmitter if you wanted to try and use it for FPV. Personally, I probably wouldn't. I would use this to record whatever you're seeing in beautiful 4K or knock it down to one of the smaller video resolutions and get your SD card to last a little bit longer. So enough of that, let me just show you some footage comparing it to the GoPro. Now this is the only footage I'm going to do here and it just gives you an idea of how close the cameras are in terms of how they perform. Now the way that the colour and the saturation is being handled by each of the cameras is a little bit different, but as it plays on, hopefully you'll see how beautifully the fox here is handling the image. Now I would say on the day, the actual colour on the day is probably somewhere between the two. The GoPro Hero Session 5 is slightly oversaturating everything and everything's looking a little bit slightly uh, kind of a yellowy tinge in the Fox here. But I'm sure messing around with the settings because this is all default settings on both cameras, it'll look fantastic. But as we're coming up here and the sun's coming out, hopefully you can start to see how well the Fox here is coping with the high contrast situation, how quickly it's changing between the high areas of brightness and the low areas of brightness and the wide dynamic range that it has. In fact, in some parts of the video, I had to just double check that I hadn't accidentally put the same bit of video side by side. Now, as we come up here to the top, let's just pop these cameras looking down the canal and hopefully you can see here that with supervision turned on on the Foxier box it's actually getting a wider image than the Superview image on the GoPro and that is very impressive because the GoPro Superview gives you a fantastically wide image it can sometimes kind of bow the edges out a little bit but you can see here we've got slightly more vertically and a little bit more horizontally as well.
So hopefully this has given you an appreciation for how well the camera's performing. Last thing I'll just show you here is, let me just take a shot up the canal into the bright sky, and the both cameras do exactly the same thing. They both expose for the very bright light, and also the light reflecting off the canal, and the images look very, very similar indeed, which is blooming impressive. So in summary, what do I think? Well, this camera has an awful lot of the same features, functionalities, and performs pretty much identically to the Foxy Legend 3. Now, that different form factor offers a couple of potential advantages over the Cube camera, and it also has a replaceable battery. The performance of this Foxy Box 4K camera is very impressive, but there will be instances where a box camera wouldn't be the right size and shape. So do remember that the Legend 3 is a very, very similar camera in a very different form factor. The big thing I like about this is the price. It is just over half of what that GoPro camera is that we were comparing it to, and the performance is practically identical. Foxy camera does allow you to select PAL for those of us that are using that TV system. And when you select PAL, it very nicely changes the frame rates from 30 down to 25 frames a second. Couple of considerations, uh, short battery life and you can't swap it. You'll get less than an hour out of a fully charged battery when you are recording and unfortunately it does take a long time to charge, it takes about two hours. Because these cute cameras are all built without removable batteries, that does mean that once the battery's flat, then you snook it, there's nothing else you can do. Which is again why it for those of you that want to be recording in the field or go out and spend a whole day with a camera, something like a Legend 3 from Foxair might be worthwhile considering. But the biggest drawback for me is unfortunately the size of the camera. It is fractionally bigger than the run cam. And that's not because I'm saying the run cam's better or worse or whatever. But what we are finding is a lot of the Redis Fly quads and the FPV mounts that are coming out at the moment are built and designed for the GoPro size. And I suspect that probably had a lot to do with why Runcam had issues with the Runcam 3. Their Runcam 3 was practically identical in terms of the dimensions, so it would fit into all of those Runcam style holders for the session cameras. Now I'm hoping that the fact that the Foxeer 4K box camera is a bit bigger should mean that there won't be that same litigation, allegedly. But it does mean that you are going to have to manufacture your own mounts. In fact, I've made my own mounts here for it already. I'll stick them on Thingiverse if you're interested. So if you're looking for a 4K camera in this box format that isn't going to break the bank, but it's going to work very, very well indeed, then the Fox Air box is definitely worth a look. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video and particularly for watching right to the very end. We try and release a video on Tuesday and Friday and sometimes we'll release one or two extra ones in a week as well. All of the videos on the channel are organised into easy to use playlists so do have a look in there because if you're interested in a subject we organise all the videos on that subject so you can find them easily all together in one place. If you like what we're doing, then please like and subscribe and tell others about the channel so they can come and join as well. We're available in all of the usual social media places, particularly in places like Instagram, Twitter, and we also share all of our 3D designs on Thingiverse.